Hi guys, so in this video I want to go over the changes that are happening or the proposed changes that are happening um, in Ontario um, that I alluded to last week in a video but I've al also had a few com or questions sent to me um, to kind of discuss them here on the channel because people are confused and also you know if you don't live here then you don't know what's going on and why I'm doing stuff like attending rallies and all this so um, right now the Liberal government is in power both provincially um, and also federally and I'm actually having a really rough time with this on a personal level now with all these changes because I think that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is absolutely fantastic um, and I think he's doing a really really good job and he's liberal on a federal level and then on a provincial level we have Kathleen Wynne um, who is the Premier of Ontario sorry just moving my leg there and recently I can't even remember what what date it was now but a couple months ago she announced um, that Queen's Park which is our pro provincial government is um, earmarking I guess 333 million dollars for autism services which sounds fantastic it's a huge amount of money um, and you know great this is awesome that she's earmarked this in the next budget however what very quickly came to light was that um, this new autism program funding basically makes it so that children that are currently on the IBI wait list are going to be booted off after they turn five. Now, IBI is Intensive Behavioral Intervention Therapy. Um, and from what I un understand, IBI is actually, I don't know if it's an, an Ontario term, excuse me, or a Canadian term. Um, but from what I can, I can discover in reading online, um, it's a similar thing to enhanced ABA services in the States, for example. ABA is Applied Behavioral Analysis Theory. So basically it's, and I'm just going to use it in relation to autism because that's what we're talking about now. Um, so this ABA therapy is, um basically almost like an umbrella type of therapy of how to work with kids with autism in this case um, to help them learn better. Um, and IBI therapy is kind of a form of that but it's extremely extensive um, and intensive hence IBI, one of the eyes. Um, my son was fortunate to be one of the children with autism who qualifies for IBI because not every child with autism actually would benefit from IBI therapy. He was and as a result for ABA for example which we just started for him jumping out of the car we get you know once a week one hour for up to six months okay. Um, and it's more of a consultative type of therapy between me and the therapist and my son. Um, IBI therapy, in comparison, was him actually going to, um, to the therapy at a specific building here in town for 24 hours a week. Mon so it was Monday he was at school, and then Tuesday through Friday he was at IBI. So this was 24 hours a week, 6 hours a day. Wait, does that math work? Yes, I think so. It was six hours a day. It was nine to three Tuesday through Friday for two and a half years. This is an extremely expensive therapy. Um, so the big problem is, and I remember reading a statistic recently, and I'm sorry I can't quote my source for it right at the moment, but um, the average age for children in Ontario to be diagnosed is around three years old. My son was just over three when he was diagnosed. Um, and we knew at 18 months that he had it and then we had to jump through all the hoops. I understand that the um, diagnosis 
path, whatever you want to call it now, is actually much shorter um, and fewer hoops to jump through to be able to get through to diagnosis. But, you know, 10 years ago, this is the way it was. Um, and he presented classic behaviors and symptoms for autism, so much so that anybody looking at him was like, yep, he's got autism. Um, but we still had to jump through the hoops and get to see specialist after specialist after specialist to be able to get the final diagnosis. So knowing that the majority of kids get diagnosed at about three, um, the new program that um, Premier Wynn is offering is allowing children to be to get IBI therapy until the day before they turn five basically so five years old is the absolute cutoff now a big problem is that currently there are children that have been on this wait list for three to four years it was actually five years of a wait list um, for my son thankfully it went from kind of the day that we started with all the assessments rather than his diagnosis date so he finally started at seven years old, went through to, till he was nine, um, and he excelled in it. He thrived in it. I mean, yes, there was good days, there was bad days, but overall, you know, he did really, really well. He started talking, although he's still very, very limited verbal. You know, he finally got potty trained. He was able to start learning academic material, um, started understanding some social cues and, and, and these kinds of things, right? That just come naturally to children. But, ch but for children on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum, that's not the case. They need to be taught this. Um, so there are a number of parents in the province that are ticked off. And that's me being nice about it. Um, they've been waiting for years now um, on the wait list for IBI therapy for their child. And I got to be honest, all that you hear from therapists and specialists whenever you're like pulling your hair out with behaviors and everything is just wait till IBI. After IBI, it'll all be fine. So this is like the beacon of hope that is given to these children or to these families, I should say. So now with how things are changing, say you get your diagnosis at three years old, you've got a wait list of two to three years, and then, but you're not allowed to take IBI past five years old. Do the math, it doesn't work. And what the government is now saying is that those children that are, be, that are no longer qualifying for um, IBI therapy, but have been been on the list, uh, been on the wait list. They're very careful with the wording that they're using. They're saying they will now be put on a list, so not a wait list. This is transferring them from a wait list to a list um, to receive an enhanced ABA therapy program. The problem is, okay, sounds great. We're being transferred from one list to another. It gets rid of the IBI wait list, which has been a big issue for years and therefore creates a new list. Um, and then from there, it's going into this, what they're de deeming as enhanced ABA therapy program. Sorry. Um, and what they've termed that enhanced ABA therapy is the Ontario Autism Program. So the problem is, <laughs> problem, this Ontario Autism Program doesn't exist. It apparently will be implemented by 2018. It's now 2016. So these children that are being kicked off the IBI list, wait list, are being put onto another list for another program that we don't know what it looks like. We don't know how intensive it's going to be. We don't know what kind of therapy is going to be offered and we can't even confirm that we are on a list. Okay, sounds like a great plan. Um, you heard the sarcasm there, right? Not, and then not only that as well, or on top of that, I should say, people are, that are being kicked off of this IBI wait list 
and that's not the terminology that they're using, but that's what's happening. Um, they are being allocated $8,000 by the government. Sounds lovely. It's $8,000. Great. Yay. Woohoo. There's a problem. $8,000 if you pay and it's $8,000 to be able to access private therapy instead of this IBI therapy. $8,000 is a drop in the bucket because a year long IBI program costs anywhere between 50 and $70,000. Do, again, do the math. $8,000 does not go far. Depending on how intensive you do it, if you do the 24 hours a week, you're going to be paying for about a month and that's it. And now I haven't been able to confirm this anywhere through documentation, but what I have heard in the community, okay, so I haven't read any um, official, you know, um, declaration about this, but what I have heard through the community is that that $8,000 the government is going to keep, they are going to assess what therapies your child needs and then pay the the therapy or the, the service provider directly. So then my question for that, which I can't get an answer for, is uh, the, the assessment that's being done by the government, is that included in that $8,000? Like is some of that $8,000 gonna be swallowed up by the assessments and the administration of the new, of the new list? Because it's not a wait list. Um, and all that. So how much of that $8,000 is actually going to provide the therapies directly for the child? So that's just kind of like a Cole's notes, just top tip of the iceberg kind of overview um, of what's going on here, why my family is attending rallies, and, you know, stuff like this. Um, now, it doesn't directly affect my son because he already did IBI, but it affects so many of our friends. And I'm happy to say, you know what? My son went through it and he started it when he was too old, according to the government. When he was too old at seven years old. Because they, they, they came up with this five years old thing from various experts that that for some reason aren't named anywhere, but their titles are being thrown about in different spots of psychologists and people that are kind of top level, if that makes any sense. But it's been confirmed that no behavioralists, so actual people that are working on the ground with these children, were actually part of this expert panel. So there is one thing with the autism community that people don't seem to understand, but our children have trained us, okay, to almost see that change is a bad thing because it affects our children so dramatically, especially those that are on the spectrum that have a really hard time with transitions. So if you're gonna come to the autism community and say, we're gonna change the entire program, but the majority of the questions that are just basic questions, like how do I get on the wait list? The answers that we're receiving from per, uh, service providers and therapists is, I don't know, or we don't know. Um, we're trying to figure that out because those therapists and service providers asked the exact same questions to the government officials that told them about two days before it was made public. No, sorry, it was a week. I've, I've confirmed that it was a week before they made it public. So the parents and caregivers are livid. Um, the service providers and therapists are just like, they're, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? And nobody seems to know what's going on and that's what makes it worse is that we just we don't have any answers and all that we're getting from the provincial liberal government is yes but look we're investing 333 million yes you are but you're not telling us how we're not able to then go and actually plan 
a future and try to hang our hopes on something else. <sighs> so, as I said, that's the tip of the iceberg. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Um, I'll answer them as best I can. Most of this, as I said before, is also my understanding of things. Um, but, you know, I have one friend, for example, and I, I included him in one of the shots at the rally where they got the letter saying, you know, yay, your son's going to be in IBI starting in June. Thanks for being so patient on the wait list for the last two or three years, something like that. And in that same um, stack of mail that day, they also received the letter saying, nope, sorry, your kid is too old. And that's also something else that is ticking people off because people have been starting to receive those letters from service providers. But the government is telling us that none of those letters have actually gone out yet. That they actually go out starting May 1st. So guess what? Then how have people already been receiving them for weeks now? So there's the best way or one of the ways that I can try to explain what's going on. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or send them to me privately. I'm happy to answer them as best I can. Um, and I've actually been uh, co-organizing a round table um, for next week, which will probably be this week by the time I, um, I actually upload this. Um, and it's the MPP Monique Taylor, who is the, the official critic of the Ministry of children and youth and she actually asked me to help organize a round table um, so that she can speak directly with parents so I'm really looking forward to that on Monday I think it's going to be a very very great um, opportunity for parents voices to be heard and um, it's going to be very emotional as well um, so I'm gonna have lots of Kleenexes boxes and stuff like that there um, but yeah, you know, the, the NDP and the conservative parties are listening. They are helping to share a lot of our voices um, in question period and really ask those hard questions. And we just wish that the provincial liberal party was listening, but they really don't seem to be. They're blocking a lot of us on Twitter, for example. Um, they aren't going into the offices if they find out that we're rallying in front of them, stuff like this, like, and nobody's getting responses back. So people are pretty angry and, you know, for Canadians, for Canadians to actually <laughs> be getting angry and demonstrating and, you know, rally after rally after rally and letter writing campaigns and media and everything. I mean, this is a big deal. <laughs> Because Canadians, we're sorry. We're sorry for everything. Except for when you mess with our children. Because <sighs> then Mama Bear comes out. So, I think with that, I'm going to finish this off. And say that I hope that you guys are having a great day. And leave any questions below if you have any. And I will try my best to answer them. Talk to you guys later. Bye.